and welcome back to Talking Cars. I'm Jennifer Stockberger. I'm Mike Monticello. And I'm Ryan Pizlikowski. So this week we're going to talk about um, our impressions of the 2021 Honda Ridgeline. Now, I'll be honest, the Honda Ridgeline hasn't had a huge redesign, but they've certainly tweaked, uh, let's call it a refreshing exterior, interior access, the rear doors open a little better, standard all-wheel drive, um, some some infotainment improvements in the cab. So we're going to talk about the Ridgeline 1, but we're also going to talk about this huge pickup truck market and where the Ridge, huge and popular, I should say, where the Ridgeline fits in. You know, you have everything from construction workers who are loading these pickups to the to the nines taking them to work every day and then you have the person who's never ever probably put hardly anything in the bed but it's really their daily driver and their family vehicle so there's just a huge range of trucks a huge range of uses and we'll start with you ryan one what do you think of the ridge line and two um where does it fit in okay and what would you buy what would you buy well there's not enough money for what I want, but um, no, the Ridgeline, listen, the Ridgeline has always, I've always thought highly of the Ridgeline. It's kind of a trailblazer um, in recent years into this kind of uh, miniature, comfortable truck market. And this is, I, I, it's a truck, but it's kind of, to me, it's an SUV with a bed. And the reason I say that is because it drives like one. It drives like an SUV. It doesn't drive like a truck. Um, it's a unibody uh, type of vehicle. It's based on the the Honda Pilot. You know, for a lot of people, this is, this makes a great everyday vehicle um, to do whatever you need. Um, if, assuming you're not hauling a ton of weight uh, um, in, in the bed or on the trailer hitch, um, I think it's a great it's a great vehicle. It's not it's not I wouldn't it's not for me. Um, I need something a little more rugged, but. Um, I thought, you know, they, they did fix the rear access. Um, this thing is l- largely the same as it was, but they didn't, they did, uh, fix the rear access. The doors open a little wider because those openings are actually fairly narrow, um, for the rear. And so they opened the doors a little wider, which helps there. Um, you know, the infotainment, some little, you know, things here and there, but it's largely this, you know, the same vehicle. It drives the same. Um, I didn't have any, um, any qualms anywhere really. As, as far as, uh, the, a truck that I would buy and in, in a perfect world, um, I wouldn't daily drive a truck. I would have a truck that I could use for the heavy duty stuff when I need it. I tow a lot. Um, I have a long driveway I, that I would like to put a, a plow on it. I would put a plow on it to plow the driveway. Um, I would, me personally, if money was no object, I would buy a, like a, a Chevy or a GMC 2500 um, HD with a Duramax diesel and Allison transmission in it. Okay. To me, that's the ultimate uh, truck powertrain. Um, you know, when you're towing a lot of weight, when you're towing a lot of weight, I have a boat and I have a uh, landscape tractor. I have all kinds of stuff. When you tow a lot of weight, the 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 heft and the stiffness of the vehicle plays into it. Most trucks, most ha- even half ton trucks today have plenty of power to tow whatever we need to tow. But having the the axles and the strength and the the, the chassis, the the bigger frame, um, goes a long way in handling the load. It's not you know just pulling it down the road. It's stopping it. It's turning. It's you know handling that weight. Um, so you know, but no, and I, and I understand a vehicle like that's not efficient, and I it, it's not fun to park. These trucks are huge, but um, if it was, it didn't have to be my all uh, everyday vehicle, and you know, I'd have a smaller car for a regular everyday vehicle. And in an ideal world, I can't afford any of this. I'm just, you know, you gave me an opportunity to daydream, so I'm doing it. But uh, <laughs> Wait, um, so an M3, yeah. an M3, and a 2500. <laughs> that, yeah, that, let's Diesel. get real impractical. Yeah, <laughs> that would be an awesome garage. Um, but that's that's just me. I mean, I, so I a truck I, to I, use as a truck. Yeah, that's a truck. Truck, and that's what I would do with it. I, 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 I would, you know, use it that way. Um, but th- that's not saying, you know, the ridge line. Like I said before, it's perfect for people that need um, just, you know, it's, it's basically an SUV with a bed. You can go to the dump with it, with you know, the, the little bit of trash you might have, the daily trash stuff like that. You know, you're not going to load this thing to the gills um, uh, like a you might like with a 2500 series truck, but. Um, and it's comfortable. It's quiet. It drives nice. It drives like a car. It doesn't drive like a truck. It's easy to park. There's a lot of uh, has a lot of virtues, really. Yeah, Mike, you agree? Where would, where do you put the ridge line in in the Mike Monticello? Well, well, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to Monty's rule of trucking in a second here. But okay. dealing <laughs> with the ridge line, I hadn't been in one. I think maybe since we tested our 2017 version, and you know, in, uh, in 2020 they re- they uh, replaced the six speed automatic with a nine speed automatic. 
And so getting in this thing, I was just struck immediately by what a wonderful powertrain that is. You know, we've mm -hmm. talked about it before, uh, naturally aspirated um, engines. There's just something very special about them, especially natu naturally aspirated V6s. That's what this has. The power is very appropriate for the vehicle. It's and, and the transmission upshifts really oh smoothly. God, I was so, so impressed. Do you remember? You guys remember? It wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that many years ago. Manufacturers were coming out with eight speed and nine speed automatics, and a lot of them didn't shift that well, right? Yeah. And what do, what do we always say at CR? wait a year or two after a brand new yeah, model right. comes out right they've worked the bugs and i'm not saying blaming honda or anything i'm saying in general these uh jake likes to call them multi-speed transmissions because we used to think of anything bigger than a six more than a six speed was like this crazy transmission but <laughs> that we are finding that these these automatics are so good these days and the one in the ridge line is fantastic i mean there's nothing to fault with the powertrain at all and ryan you talk about the ride again you talk a pickup this is this is doesn't write anything like a pickup you'd swear you were driving a car or mm -hmm. a, a really good suv right, right. Uh, it's easy to get in and out of that's something pickups are not easy to get in and out of even the smaller pickups are not easy to get in and out of tacoma are you listening like the tacoma <laughs> is really awkward to get in and out of right yeah. so this one's su super easy because it's again it's it's not at that high truck height of course there's, there's some reasons for that. It, it pretty much can't go off road, right? Ryan, you talked about the towing. The Ridgeline isn't going to be able to tow the big trailers uh, that, that, you know, a lot of people need to tow. Again, if, if you don't need it, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, we're talking about the, the new pickups that are coming out, right? The Ridgeline didn't really start this trend. It sort of did, but it sort of didn't, which is these, you know, because I mean, if you think about the Ridgeline and now suddenly the Hyundai Santa Cruz is, is out, right? And then the Ford Maverick. So these even smaller pickups with even smaller beds, right? That also drive like cars. Uh, but here's one of the things about this Ridgeline compared to say the Santa Cruz and even the uh, recently redesigned Nissan Frontier, right? The rear seat is so much more comfortable. It's, 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 it's night and day. Like the Santa Cruz and the all new Frontier, the seat back is really upright, right? Like as an adult, I, you wouldn't want to be back there for any period of time. But the Ridgeline, again, they did it right. You know, you you can you can you can sit back there like a normal person. But Monty's rule of trucking, right? The number one rule in Monty's rule of trucking is the bed has to be at least six feet or longer. If it's not oh. it if it if it's not six feet or longer, it ain't a pickup. Okay. And I'll just give you an example. Last night I was doing some some. Uh, well, tonight I have to go pick up some furniture from Ikea, right? Everyone loves going to Ikea to pick up furniture and then trying to, then trying to build it afterwards, right? Build it together, right? <laughs> I looked at the dimensions and the Ridgeline's bed, I went out and measured it. It's five feet, four inches long. And the furniture I'm picking up is a few inches longer than that, like maybe three inches longer, right? Not going to work. Now, I could probably finagle a way to get it in there, but for the two-hour drive to and from Ikea that I have to go to to find this specific piece of furniture, I'm not, I don't want to deal with that. So what am I going to do after the show? I'm going to go to the office and pick up an SUV, right? So I'm, I'm ditching the pickup, the useful vehicle <laughs> for an SUV. So that's one thing. The other thing is, what the heck is with this HPD version that, that we got? <laughs> like, okay, for those of you that don't know, HPD, it says it right on the truck. I'm not yep. making this up. Honda Performance Development. Please tell me anywhere in this HPD um, package that has anything to do with performance. It is uh, a different grill, fender flares, uh, gold wheels, and HPD decals. Decals. Now let's let's just deal with the gold wheels alone. <laughs> Look, gold with red. Now, I mean, give me a black and gold Pontiac Trans Am from the '70s. Oh heck yeah! Give me, you know, a Yamaha Midnight Special Cruiser from the '80s, also black and gold. Yes, but the red with the gold wheels <laughs> just looks gaudy. And I mean, for anyone who's bought an HPD version, I don't mean any offense whatsoever, but why would you buy this truck? And why would Honda put something out that says HPD on it and there's no performance yeah. benefit from this package whatsoever? It's just a waste of money. So what would you buy? Six oh, foot bed. Okay, speaking of gaudy, okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, what, yeah, God, exactly. what would you buy? Long time viewers of the show know that I'm sticking with the same thing I've said for a while now. Ram 3500, not to not to one up Ryan. You know I would never want to one up Ryan. Ram 3500 dually, for those of you that don't know what a dually is, it's dual rear wheels, okay? Dually, 
Okay, crew cab, eight foot bed, of course. And because, I mean, sky's the limit, I'm going to get 6.7 liter inline six turbo diesel, but I'm going to go for the high output version because I need a thousand seventy five pound feet of torque. <laughs> what if I have to put some mountain bikes in the back? Come on, seriously, guys. <laughs> it, it might happen. I'm like, what, what do you need all that the, truck for? That's incredible. I that's love driving dualies. I just absolutely, maybe. That is the biggest truck to possibly drive, I think. That's You're welcome. A, that is You're a welcome. massive, massive. That's view. a lot of truck. Anything you guys need towed, I'm your man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pickup man. I'm like I'm like Joe Diffie. I'm a pickup man. You, I think <laughs> I've said this before. Peace. You should see we go to these horse shows. Now, these 3,500 diesel gooseneck horse trailers, six horse, you know, these, and they, they're they everywhere because that's what they have to have to carry all these horses and the weight of those trailers, which are huge. And these little petite women hop out of them who are the horse trainers. It's it's incredible. You, yeah, just so, so many of them at these horse shows. And look, and you're right, Jen. If you got to tow a huge trailer with six um, horses in it, uh, you know, y- you have to go with a pretty big yeah. truck. Now, I'm yeah. I'm only half joking, folks. My point is they have a reason. I'm not sure. Okay. See, I knew you were going to get hurtful. I knew at some point you were going to get hurtful. Um, I have driven dualies, dually diesels. I just love the way they drive. And I would, look, I do haul motorcycles around. You guys know that. Uh, Go to track days and put my dirt bikes in the back. Do I need a dually diesel? No. Do I need the eight foot bed? Absolutely. Because I I, uh, want to be able to have the motorcycle straight on. Not, you know, canted like people right. have to do with the short beds and the, and the dirt bikes and stuff. I want them straight on and I want the tailgate up. And I really want that peace of mind of knowing that that uh, my stuff is fully fully in there. I can throw, you know, gear bags and everything in there. I don't have to tie anything down. Just throw it all in there and move on my way. And and uh, and it's actually and of course, those Rams are great interiors and, and just great driving trucks. And those those turbo diesels, Ryan, you know what I'm talking oh, yeah. about. Oh, my gosh. They're so good. Anyway. Enough about me. Enough about you. That's a good choice, though. So uh, I am going to tell two stories, so try and stay awake. So the first is that I love the Honda Ridgeline. You talk about a car or a truck to love, and it's that. So I literally, when my husband bought the F-150 a couple years ago, I advocated so heavily that he should get a Honda Ridgeline. But I'll be honest, he's kind of like you two. He wanted something more trucky. You know, they do a lot of building and woodworking, and he wanted the larger bed, and he puts the mower in, and he puts the quad in. So he did, uh, to your point, Mike, he wanted the larger bed. For me, this powertrain, the way it drives, the the bed is perfect for what I need. Um, I, I liked it before. I like it even more now. I think the transmission has done wonders. I agree with you. You know, not only do you get the benefits of the V6, you get none of the detriments of the turbos on the, the smaller displacement. So you get all of that. Um, I can see myself putting grain and shavings and a few bales of hay and plants and all that stuff that I love to do. But my other confession, the other story, is I have this kind of fascination with, Ryan, you'll appreciate this, boats and campers. And I talk about the way that they use space. How in boats, even tiny houses, I like watching tiny houses, how they, you know, you pull out this cupboard and it's a closet or there's storage in every nook and cranny. I feel like we're getting there and I like to see the new things in pickup trucks, how they're making them work. You know, it used to be, uh, you have a bed. If you can't put it in the bed, you stuff it in the cab um, because you can't have it getting wet. Well, the Ridgeline is one of those awesome ones that allows some versatility. That trunk, that sealed trunk in the bed is awesome. It's waterproof. There's your option. As you said, Mike, it's comfortable to sit in the back. Even, you know, the the Ridgeline has a flip down, but also a swinging tailgate, which may not sound like much of a change, but for someone who's shorter like me, when you can swing that gate open, now you can step up into the bed off of the bumper without having to climb over the length of the tailgate flipped down. All these little niceties 
that just make me love it even more. And I'm actually, I said, if it were today and I was retiring and moving to Vermont, I think I would get myself a Honda Ridgeline. To be honest, I heart that truck. With, heart uh, that truck. with the HBD package so you can get those no. <laughs> gaudy gold wheels? Not the gaudy gold wheels. I like white. I think I would like a white Ridgeline. White wheels? And 20 miles per gallon overall. The best fuel economy of any um, non-diesel powered truck in our testing on the old version. So it's not even a gas guzzler like, you know, the old Frontier that we had was. So, yeah. Yeah, no question. It, it is night and day different than just pretty much any other any other truck out there. It, it, again, if it's even truly a truck is, is a matter for other people to debate if they want. But right. as a pickup-ish vehicle, it is it drives so different than, than anything else. Uh, again, it's such a huge market. There's probably a truck for everybody out there. Just do a little, do a lot. Well, I shouldn't say do a little, do a lot of research and find out what suits you the best. So, of course, we will um, have full coverage of any changes to the Honda Ridgeline or the old road test. Um, again, as this is just a refreshing at consumerreports.org. So our question this week comes from Sean in Fairbanks, Alaska. Um, as always, keep your questions, comments, 30-second video clips coming, talking cars at iCloud.com. And Sean writes, with all this talk of EVs being the future, I've been looking at a Mini Cooper EV, but my spouse thinks now is not the time. One of the concerns is reliability and life of the battery due to the extreme cold temperatures we experience here. Average daily driving would be no more than 40 miles and it would be charged at home. What are your thoughts on this kind of car for environments like this? Am I destined to have some sort of internal combustion engine for the foreseeable future? Great question, Sean. And boy, does it get cold in Fairbanks, Alaska. Monty, what do you got for Sean? Yeah, so, I mean... uh the Mini Cooper EV is it's an interesting choice. It, you know, it, it has a 110 mile driving range, right? So it's on the very, very low side for today's EVs. So that's something to think about. And the reality is, yeah, cold temperatures. Uh, well, let's deal with the reliability for a lot of EVs have been pretty reliable, and batteries have lasted longer. Like when you think of hybrids, how much longer the battery packs lasted, have been lasting like in Toyota Priuses and things than people thought they would. So we don't have a lot of data on super cold, you know, EVs and, and reliability in super, super cold temperatures. But we we can talk about we've done some testing on how the cold weather affects range. And so luckily, you're, it's a 40 mile round trip commute or whatever, you know, 40 miles of daily driving. One, what we've decided after some testing and seeing how much the range does drop, you need to pretty much double whatever your your expected uh, driving is for the day. So in other words, you need to plan on, you need at least 80 miles of driving range. Now, the Mini Cooper does give that, uh, but you're, boy, you're, that's a pretty tight window there. You know, I, I, And what if you have to run some errands or things on the way home? Uh, obviously, if if you, I, I don't know if this is just regular driving or going to and from work. If you can charge it at work, that makes a whole different story, right? If you could charge it at at work and then you can charge it again at home. But just so you know, the, the reason why this range goes down is because it's it's not it's it's less about the battery being affected and more about the draw on the car because of the the uh, you know running the heater and the defroster and all those things to combat the cold weather inside the car, right? That's what's making, that's the prime thing that's making the, the range go down. So what I would say is, uh, my personal suggestion would be, I, I don't know that you have to, you know, wait on an EV, but I think you might want to choose a different EV. There's plenty of EVs out there, out there now with 200 miles of range or more. So I think you can go that route. And when you think about it, because this is 40 miles daily driving, is kind of perfect for an EV, right? And uh, it's just that because of the cold weather, and keep in mind the cold weather, what they have found is, you know, zero degrees Fahrenheit and colder is when the range really goes down. So you live in a pretty unique area where you, you know, I don't know the average temperature there, but it's a lot colder than say what we deal with here, even in Connecticut. So you you do have to take that in mind. So anyway, my 
my suggestion would be choose an EV that uh, that has a little bit longer range so that you don't have to worry about, you don't have that range anxiety. That's the biggest thing with EVs, right? Range anxiety. Well, cold wet, as we know, cold weather is definitely going to affect the range. Well, hot weather, just so you know, hot weather affects it too. Um, you know, because again, because you tr- you have to run the AC and everything. But so anyway, I would suggest don't necessarily say no to an EV right now, but just choose one that gives you a uh, significantly longer uh, driving range so you have better peace of mind. I, I had a thought for Sean too of maybe a plug-in hybrid. So yes, you still have an internal combustion engine, but you have some electric. So maybe you, you know, particularly during the spring and fall, you know, when you get though they're short in Fairbanks, I'm sure, but you get the advantage of most of your commute on electric power if you drive modestly, and then you have your hybrid for protection in the background. So take one step, take that middle step, Sean, instead of the full jump maybe to an EV at this point. I have anxiety about thinking about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan just had a panic attack. I, I, he did. That, that yeah. just, I get range anxiety. I don't know, but yeah, and, and again, if you run out of range in Fairbanks, Alaska, and you're pulled over on the side of the road, that's a pretty cold place to be. So great question, Sean. We thank everybody for continually supplying us talking cars at iCloud.com and hope you enjoyed listening, watching, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>